THR is reporting that the Secret Life of Bees director Gina Prince Bythewood has signed on to direct the Spider-Man spin-off film entitled Silver and Black, the offshoot that centers on characters Silver Sable and the Black Cat. Chris Yost, who worked on November's Marvel release Thor Ragnarok, is writing the most recent draft. Lisa Joy, co-creator of HBO's Westworld, also worked on a version of the script. The movie looks to begin production this fall with a release date reportedly set for October of 2018. Um, this is interesting on a couple of levels. Okay, First of all, I really don't know what to say about the director because I've never seen The Secret Life of Bee Pets. Hey. Uh, not Aww. seen that movie. I like that movie. Um, I like the Secret Life of Pets. Oh. Uh, I haven't seen the Secret Life of Bees, so oh. I yeah, so I I can't I can't pr uh, think. I haven't seen Thor Ragnarok yet, so I can't comment on what I think about the writer being on. I do like the fact that I'm starting to get the same sense about this Sony uh, Spider-Man less universe that I got with. Universal and their monster, their dark universe kind of stuff. Or at first you hear it's like, yeah, but then more and more Universal started to show, no, we're deadly serious about this. We're all and they started casting big talent and all this kind of stuff. And now a lot of more people are getting on board with it. Sony, they say they're going to do this, and a lot of people are, eh. but you know, then all of a sudden Tom Hardy agrees to sign on, who's notoriously fi fi fin fin I was trying to say either uh, fickle or picky, and I ended up saying finicky, finicky. Which is a word. <laughs> or Fickly? fickly or something, whatever I was going to say, uh, who's notoriously picky about the scripts that he chooses to be a part of. Now, obviously, he's an A-list actor, and the fact that now they're moving ahead with this, that's great. The one thing about this story that is a major head-scratcher to me is this. The reports that we're say, hearing is saying that Sony's aiming for an October 2018 release for this. That's awfully soon, but it's perfectly within time that they can do it. That's fine. But they've already announced that a Venom movie is coming out in October 3rd of 2018. So, either somebody's got their wires crossed, or Sony is doing something that even I cannot defend, uh, in the sense that they're going to release these two movies in the same month. That to me would make no sense. I have to assume there is a mistake here. And look, I am still completely for this. I think this is worth trying. Look, I'm a big fan of Marvel. Everybody knows I'm a big fan of Marvel. They are not the only people who can make a decent movie. Other people can too. And Sony, for as much crap as they've gotten lately, has proven over the years that they can make great movies and they can make great comic book movies as well. And they've absolutely struck out at the same time. No doubt about it but they can make some really good stuff. And if they've got an idea for this and somebody like Tom Hardy wants to come on, that's fine. I do want to see more before, like right now I'm just being, I'm choosing to be optimistic. I'm not feeling natural optimism yet. I need to see some more stuff about this, but I just can't believe this will be in October. I don't know you hear about this, what do you think? Well, as far as the October stuff, I agree. One of them will move. Now, maybe they, they're just kind of putting both of them there and seeing which one get, gets farther along first. At least they can lock down that date in October and they, can, they know that they're gonna move one of them because they're not gonna cannibalize on their own film around the same month because even if it comes you out with- You hope not. Two, it, I, it, there's no way. They're just locking down that date and making sure that one of them will be there if they can get it all in production. But what they are doing right, I'm gonna share your optimism because what they're doing right is they're going, go big or go home. Yeah. Go after Tom Hardy. Go, I mean, Secret Life of Bees, I actually really enjoyed that movie and um, I'd like to see her doing another movie and I also think that Thor Ragnarok, if it comes out, well, the trailers look pretty cool. That's all I can say yeah, about that so great. far. But if it comes out the way that we hope it will and it's the best, that it's, it could easily be the best out of the Thor films. And if it is, having that writer on this is a good way to go for them. So I think it's a smart move to try to do it. I still am, it's, we, it's not connected to the MCU. Right? None of this. As far, as far as what they've communicated, right now. these films are not connected to the MCU. It's, it, as far as we know. It's still very interesting to me that I don't know how they're going to do this, and I don't know how they're going to do it without Spider-Man involved. And, but that being said, every time we all share the same philosophy, getting talent is never a bad thing. And that's what they're doing. Perry? I am getting more and more hyped for this. The fact that they got Tom Hardy kind of you know, recolored this whole situation for me a little, just to get a better understanding of the talent that they're reaching for. And I love the idea that they hired her to direct something like this. We have Wonder Woman coming out. We are constantly talking about having strong female directors lead any project, whether it stars a female hero or not. But this is another great package to kind of push that forward a little bit. And in terms of the 2018-19 thing, I think that's just something that kind of got 
lost in translation, posted on one site and then picked up on other sites. But in the source article, which I believe Deadline had the exclusive on this, there is no mention of 2018. As of right now, I think what we know is that the Venom movie is 2018, and I think the prediction is that this movie will come out in 2019. Another fun little point here, which I really like, is that she is not just directing it. Yost pens the previous draft, and she's going to rewrite it. She's also an insanely talented writer because not only I liked Secret Life of Bees too. It's not the greatest thing oh. I've ever seen, but I enjoyed it quite a bit. But Love and Basketball. Tell me mm. you've seen Love and yeah, Basketball because yeah, yeah, yeah. that the, I think that was her feature debut and what kind of like put her on the I map. I had no idea. Oh my God, that's such a great movie. So you put her in in this equation here, and I think it's promising. Ken, what do you think about all this? Uh, there, my focus goes to kind of what you were saying, John, about these shared universes and the, these studios trying to do these things. My, my eyes start to gloss over again. Like, sure, everyone wants a shared universe. The only shared universe I, will, I like is when I take a double Western cheeseburger and a Del Taco burrito <laughs> and I make it's called a Del Caro's Ken universe. It's great. Um, but it, when you start drafting for talent, you start getting these people in, then you start focusing in. Okay, they're serious and, and that is something that's going to be, I mean, yeah, you're right, Tom Hardy. I mean, yeah, he was in Dark Knight, but to get him back, to get... Uh, 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 characters that I'm not familiar with. I, I have Silver Sable and Black Cat. Sounds great. Sounds like a tag team in the 90s WCW, Christian. Um, yeah. Actually, it's I, a Dark Knight Returns, Ken. Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Um, and we still live in an era where a female director is news, and let's hope that one day that is as common as the sun rising in the morning, but it is also, that is very important. That's a good thing, too. It is really funny when you sit back and think about how much the addition of Tom Hardy has changed a lot of it. It hasn't won everybody over, nor should it win everybody over just yet. But I'm trying to think of what name could have been brought up, you know, in the reports that would have caused a bigger tonal shift, like other than maybe Christopher Nolan is coming into yeah, yeah. direct direct. I mean, like seriously, the addition of Tom Hardy to this has. And he, and he, yeah, sorry. To cut no, you go up. ahead. He, he's been sniffing around like these these superhero movies, like besides Dark Knight uh, Returns, but he's been doing. Uh, is it Rises or Returns? Rises. Dark Knight Rises. Rises. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, Christian, it's I know. Things, That's right? absolutely, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Say it, I was waiting for Ben to yell at me. But no, but I think he's been he's been looking at some of these movies. There's been rumors. I mean, he's going to do the cameo in episode eight. He wants to get more involved right. with Mad Max. He wants to get more involved. So to lock him into one of these projects, very smart move.